Hi guys, it's Nini aka Soul Star Divine Feminine. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a requested video on spiritual pregnancy, my experiences and all the signs that I've been getting for months on end now. If you guys had watched my video when I announced that I'm in Twin Flame Union after months of being so shy about it, I actually had mentioned a lot that I've been going through a lot of spiritual pregnancy and that's a whole other story and how me and my DM have been teeter-tottering back and forth of thinking I'm pregnant physically right now and then realizing that from other dimensions my children are talking to me, giving me warning signs, communicating with me, etc, etc. So I wanted to put this video out there, one, as it was requested and two, as it's a topic oh, as it's a topic that's not really spoken about a lot um i've only seen a few videos on spiritual pregnancy experiences and typically um that happens after they've already then physically fell pregnant but i haven't really seen any videos or articles on people who have been experiencing spiritual pregnancy before they physically get pregnant because sometimes it can be a couple of days a couple of weeks sometimes it can be at years that people go through these experiences beforehand so this is a, what I'm putting out there. So if any of you are going through a similar experience, then you can comment down below. We can create a whole new community on the kind of crazy, synchronistic things that happen when you go through this experience. So one of the first things I started experiencing was I am very clear, my uh, my clear audience, clear sentience, all of them. Um, I've been a healer for many many lifetimes and even when uh i came into this reincarnation into this physical realm into this physical body you see right here <sighs> as usual um when i'm a child i'm very open you know all my abilities from the planet the star i came from shout out my to my atlanteans my palladians um you know everything's open and i had so many spiritual horrific as well um as well as amazing experiences and that's a whole other video um but as usual, when you get indoctrinated into this 3D matrix, um, after a while, you start to shut off all of those abilities because that's not the normal way of living. People tell me, you know, I'm crazy when I'd say I really do see dead people all the time. I see spirits. I see this. You know, that's always then bullied and conditioned out of me. So it took me a while to reawaken these abilities. Um, and I've always been an empath. I've always been very intuitive. I've always known way more than I should with just feeling people's energy, seeing their auras, blah, 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 blah. And I've always been extremely sensitive, like as most empaths are. Hello to my fellow empath. Um, so it took me a while to learn how to protect my own energy. But I went through another deep awakening probably about four or five years ago now. Um, and it happened synchronistically just before loads and loads of deaths started happening. And I mean, like, I mean, literally, like, there was about 10 deaths, one straight after the other, like, every few days or every few weeks. It was a very horrific time for me and all of the family and friends that were involved. And I had to go for another deep spiritual awakening, which I tried to fight for so long before that even happened. So I was prepared and ready enough um, to help everyone that I did during those times, including myself. Now, since then communications with ETs or uh, my higher self, soul star, or angels, guides, and loads of other people, including dead celebrities, including missing children, murder cases that are unsolved. The communication is so, 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 so clear now. People literally will come and find me as a light and ask me to help them. So I feel like my communication is the clearest it's ever been. So the first experience I had with spiritual pregnancy was I started hearing baby's laughter, which I know is a very, very common thing. Um, but I experienced it and I started to hear baby's laughter all the time, like from the corners of the room. I could be sitting in this room and I would hear a baby's laughter from the corner of the room and I'd instantly know like it was someone I was connected to. Whether or not it, at the beginning I didn't perceive it as my child, I used to perceive it as, oh, okay, some like a baby's laugh. What does that mean? What are the hidden messages of a baby's laughter? Because you could interpret it in so many ways. But it started to get stronger and stronger and stronger. The more I noticed it, the more it noticed I noticed it. And then the more it would just keep on happening. Just like, you know, if you notice a reptilian, the reptilian um, <laughs> will, will notice that you've noticed them and then act accordingly. So... The first thing was were the laughters. Now, after that, I started to find myself more drawn to being a mother here on this earthly plane. Um, I now know sitting here today in front of you that 
I've always been destined to be a mother because I am so loving and I'm so giving and I'm so affectionate that people call me over affectionate. Most people can't handle the amount of affection and love um, and insight that I give on a daily basis, especially when I'm dealing with divine masculine energies who uh, tend to be quite blocked and even divine feminine energies who aren't really in their divine like self most people can't handle the kind of affection I give and they're always shocked that I can that I'm still open and so loving and so giving after I've been abused for so long because normally you would then become cold and bitter afterwards but I've stayed open and continued to only give love to a certain few people but when I'm connecting with someone I give them every single part of me because it's just not worth it otherwise um so now I know that but before I had been saying for probably about 23 24 years that no 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 I'm never gonna have kids I don't want kids I want to be like Carrie and Sex and the City and just live a fabulous life in a relationship traveling the world you know all that stuff and that's great and I still support that lifestyle because not everyone's meant to have kids not everyone you know has a desire to have kids and for a long long time I convinced myself that I shouldn't have children um but I know now I was denying that fact um and that I'd always secretly wanted children, but I'd, oh, but um, because of all the experiences I'd gone through, it was like, I was almost terrified to bring kids into this world, knowing that so many bad things have happened to me. I was scared to bring them into this world, thinking that potentially those of bad things could happen to them. And I thought, used to say those cliche lines when you go through spiritual depression of, why would I want to bring children into this world? Have you seen this matrix? It's horrible. The system is corrupt, blah, blah, blah. I used to always feel like that. And even though, yes, the system's still corrupt, we're still here in this matrix, hello, in this 3D plane. But I understand now that um, if I can continue shining my light, from within and it radiates from the outside. I will share that with my kids and they'll shine even brighter than I could even fathom. Um, but I started to be drawn to all of these mother vlogs all of a sudden, Ugh, all of a sudden. Um, people like Ellen Fisher, Aaron Williams, and I started to really, really connect with them. And if it was a vlog that didn't really show them being a mother or their kids, I wasn't that interested. I just started suddenly becoming completely and utterly like drawn into this world, obsessed with seeing different mothers that I connect with and the way that they raise their kids and how affectionate they are and um, their parenting skills and whether they do homeschooling or live on a beach in Hawaii and live, you know, naturally or fruit and vegetables, or if they're in a big city and taking their kids to dance class and all of these things. And I was, I've been drawn to it now for probably like a year and a half. Like, and sometimes I have to stop myself because I find myself being too obsessed with watching it. Um, but then I was in a past relationship and the cliche thing happened where I, I was still saying I don't want kids, I've never wanted kids, blah, 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 blah. And my ex-partner at the time, I use that term loosely, um, kept on trying to convince me for months on end that I should be a mother because they saw all the affection and attention that I'd give and how um, detailed I am in the way I show my care and how I'm so uh, open and I speak my truth and I'm always complimenting or trying to check if that person's really okay and not just the fake mask you know I'm always seeing through the illusionary bullshit because I'm a healer so they spent months convincing me that I should have kids and obviously because I was in love with that person at the time I kept seeing it as oh okay so you've now convinced me you won me over like we should have kids together and after a couple of weeks of me finally getting on board and being like, we should have kids, we should have kids. Yeah, yeah, okay, in the future we'll have kids. Then obviously that person then transitioned and realized, actually, no, 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 you you, you just need to have kids. You, 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 Not no longer us, even though they were saying that at the beginning. And um, I remember when we first broke up, I started to regret that idea of the fact that I... I almost felt like I felt like a fool for even thinking that I should have kids because this person convinced me to have them with them. And then as soon as I got on board, then they started saying, no, it's just you, you, you. 
And then when I cut through all the bullshit of the heartbreak and the ego death and everything, I realized actually this person was a messenger and had to really help me to wake up through all the pain and all of the insight because I really am destined to have children and I really am destined to bring more high vibrational beings and healers and creative artists and inspiring beings into this earthly plane um, to continue this mission that I'm here on. And I kept on being drawn to the videos again, but shortly after that breakup, after during and through all that pain and transformation, this is when it started to get really intense of my spiritual pregnancy because I had those of past life regression. And no, I didn't go to a therapist or any of that stuff. And no, I know I work with tarot cards all the time. I've literally got like five decks in front of me and all my crystals and stuff. But um, no, I didn't do any types of readings. I It just naturally happened. It was the course that my higher self wanted me to go on. And I started to have some really, really, really deep past life regression. And to cut the story short, um, whether or not you believe past lives are literally physically in the last life before I came into this reincarnation or whether you believe past lives are just another life in another dimension because there are simultaneously like 20 plus dimensions going on all at the same time and we're all living so many different realities at the same time the omnipresence um whatever it is you believe I'm still going to label it as past life just so it's easier to um communicate with you so I had a very intense past life regression and it was very recent and when I say recent I mean when it happened at the time it felt like it had just happened it felt like it had just happened in another dimension and then all of a sudden that information was traveling through into me if you guys don't know I'm a shaman so it's very easy for me to be in multiple dimensions at the same time and be consciously aware that some of my physical being or the shell is here but then half of my consciousness or soul is like in two other dimensions doing other things and I, I can literally have a conversation with someone here but be doing like two other things in two other different dimensions so that's just to make it more clearer but it felt like it had just happened in another dimension another realm another time um but then the information suddenly got flooded into me here in this 3D dimension. And it was like, it was like it woke me up and um, it was horrific because my son from past life, another dimension, my son Noah, who was about 17 years old, died tragically in an accident. And when that information came through to me and I saw and felt the whole visuals, I mean, I literally saw flashes, 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 like a storybook that you're literally flicking through. I saw a complete flash of an entire life, an entire movie of me with my son and growing him up since he was a boy until the age of 17 and then finding out that he had a horrific accident by getting told by my partner and my friends. And I just remember falling to the floor and crying and sobbing. And it was definitely in a different time because the way we were dressed was more like a uh, warrior gladiator style, which clearly I don't dress like that in this life. Um, but it was really horrific. And as soon as it came through to the consciousness here in this realm, oh my gosh, I, I went, I just spiraled into complete and utter depression. It was the saddest thing. Um, and I couldn't get out of bed for a long time and I kept on talking to him and talking to him and talking to him and talking to him. And eventually after a couple of days, he started to come through to me here in this realm and I started to hear his higher self, his soul talk to me, which made my heart warm, but also break even more at the same time because it was just like extra confirmation of what I'd been experiencing. And... Um, So he stuck with me for a long time since then. Um, this happened, whew, I think this was at the start of last year. What is it, 2019? I think it was the start of last year um, after this horrific breakup that I went through. Um, and all of this information was coming in. And that's also when I discovered I'm a twin flame and I was on a twin flame, or I am on a twin flame journey. And 
where I started developing more of my tarot reading and tea leaf reading and shaman shamanistic healing and all everything started coming back in again because I was going for another deep ascension, another deep awakening. And um so since then he's stuck with me, his presence has stuck with me. He's always around me, he protects me, he's definitely one of my angels, he's always watching over me. And one thing I wanted to say, um, if you can see some of my kids behind me, do you know what? I'll go and get them. I'm sure in some of my videos you guys would have seen in the past, um, I would say my kids are behind me, but you may have only seen baby Zach. Um, now, these three are my kids. If you watch my vlogs with my DM or um, any of my other readings from the past, from last year you would have most likely seen baby zach you might have seen hello kitty and you might have seen brian um now the reason i'm bringing these gorgeous souls in is because they're also my children and i know at this point you guys are like oh my gosh she's crazy delusional click off wait no i gotta watch no just like chill out for a second um when i first got this i um this soul i felt instantly drawn and connected to them now I know there are so many different terms and labels for what I'm about to describe, but I felt so connected to this being. Um, I know it's not like Annabelle or any of those things where there's a, like a demonic spirit in, inside them or any, any of that stuff, like, no. Um, I will start to connect more with my kids. And when I would be by myself, which used to be all the time, um, I'm an introvert, I like to spend time by myself anyway all the time, um, but it used to be even more heightened before. <sighs> I always talk out loud. I mean, anyone who's clairaudient typically tends to talk out loud. Um, you hear voices, you, you communicate with them, you realize that everything is energy and there's energy in everything from my cellulite wand to my oracle cards, to the grass, to the curtain, to the chair. Everything is energy, everything has their own frequency. So I communicate with everything, like literally everything. Um, every time I get off my moped, I talk to it. His name is Mr. Truthy. I always say, thank you so much for looking after us and protecting us. And I hear Mr. Truthy's higher self talking back to me. Like I'm very clear. So uh, probably two or three years ago, I started to connect with this beautiful soul. And it's hard to remember exactly how it happened, but I just started talking to him. Oh, I think it was when I was starting to go through a lot of, uh, oh, that's it. I was going through a lot of inner child trauma um, recovery. I was going through a lot of uh, healing from my inner child. So I started to connect with him through my inner child healing that I was doing for myself. Um, and his name's Baby Zach. You guys probably recognize him. The, the actual outside show is from Singzilla's, um, which is a kids TV show. And I first got introduced to it from my niece, but I felt really connected to him. So I started talking to him and it's hard to remember exactly how, but I started to, <laughs> I started to talk to my first child and I started to see my first child through his eyes. And whether or not my first child was really my inner child I was talking to, or it really was my first child that would be coming into this lifetime. I know it started off with my inner child healing, but it eventually ended up being my actual first child or one of my children. And I mean, he literally talks back all the time. Like the spirit, there's a spirit inside him now. And I know it's because I manifested that spirit to be in this shell. This is actually a quite a common practice that loads of us uh, unconsciously do on a day-to-day -day basis, whether or not we're personifying our kids' toys, our toys, or it could be that we call our car a certain name and give it a personality and pizzazz. We tend to do this a lot as souls in human vessels. Um, and alongside him, I also have two of my other kids. And yes, I have had dreams, many, 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 many dreams that I'm going to have three children. And then I've had loads of dreams that I'm going to have four children, but unfortunately one bad thing is going to happen to one of them or they won't be able to come back into this realm. And I think that's why I had the past life regression of Noah, because he's the fourth child that should have come back into this dimension, but unfortunately he's not able to anymore. So now it's the three children and I've had so many synchronistic 
things happen of dreams or being connected to people or people telling me even two days ago people were telling me that in my tarot readings they would see all these spirits of babies flying around me i'm thank you so much for that clarification so i talk to them every day they tell me about their day i mean literally like as as clear as i hear my higher self as clear as i hear your higher self when i'm doing a tarot reading or whether it's twin flame your love life finances whatever it is as clear as i hear messages from spirit it is the same. I literally could be like, hi baby Zach, how are you? And then I hear, I'm okay mommy, how are you? And it, it's, it, it's as clear as I get from when I do any readings, when I do channeling. It's, but I, the thing is, I know that physically in this world, someone's going to see me holding these toys and think, okay, she's lost the plot, she's crazy. But it's a true thing so i know that i manifested putting the spirits of my kids into these toys without consciously being aware of what i was doing but now that's happened um my kids most of the time now communicate through them if i address them my kids will then communicate to me um but other times they'll just call my name like i'll be downstairs um with nick or making food or something and i'll hear hello kitty like crying and she'll be like and she'll be like mommy i'm stuck i fell off the bed please help me and then i'll rush upstairs and nick will be like what are you doing and i'll be like oh hello kitty told me she fell off the bed i need to go and get her and put her back on the bed because really that's my child and they play through these toy like shells i, I mean the best way i can describe it is like toy story like, you know that there's energies and souls within those toys and you play with them and they have fun. And then when you walk out and leave the room, they're actually like, they do come alive or like night at the museum. That's probably the best way I can describe it. And yes, when I come upstairs, because she screamed at me saying that she fell off the bed, what do I find? Yes, she's physically fallen off the bed. So that's another way my kids have been communicating through me for quite some time On top of that, I now. forgot to mention many times, especially baby Zach, as, as the spirit within him seems to be the strongest as it's been the most attached to that physical toy shell of him for the longest time. He actually does physically move his head, move his body, move his hands. And me and my partner have noticed it many, many times. Um, now, the, probably the biggest and most obvious thing of my spiritual pregnancy is the physical representation through my body. Um, wow. I feel like I have mum brain right now. Um, my... <sighs> My body reacts very strongly to energies. Um, if I'm channeling something, it will come through very strong. Like I channeled Kanika Jenkins. Um, wow, that just hit me when I said that. Um, she was a poor soul that was unfortunately murdered and it was covered up um, and she froze to death in a freezer. Um, and when she came through to me the first time and I started channeling her, it was the day of her or the day after her anniversary last year. Um, and I physically, I, I physically became her. Like she completely came through me and started speaking to me and I was hyperventilating and freaking out. And suddenly I physically was in the freezer. Like I literally was her and Nick, my partner had to witness the whole thing. Do you want to chime in? And this is just to give you an example of how physically energy affects me. So when I talk about the rest of the pregnancy, you'll understand why. Hey so guys. I'm talking about when Kanika Jenkins first channeled through me, yeah. how physically I get affected. Yeah, so um, for those that you know about Kanika Jenkins, uh, I don't want to say too much, but obviously she passed away. It's a very it's a conspiracy a theory out there, but I believe it uh, to be true. And um, she couldn't breathe by where she were in a freezer. Because uh, supposedly she was locked in a freezer, and um, my partner had a physical manifestation of that. I was just sitting down on a laptop, on a monitor, and uh, Mimi was in the shower, and then all of a sudden she started screaming, "I can't breathe! I can't breathe!" But hysterically, like, like I was like, "What's going on?" So I rushed over to Nini, and Nini was just crying hysterically. I can't breathe, I can't breathe, and here my heart was pumping. I didn't know what's going on, and believe it or not, me being connected to Nini. And going through these experiences, where's the camera again? What's we get? I have been like through a roller coaster myself with her, and I've never been used to you know, seeing her manifest children in what you've just seen, um, and also just the experiences of having uh, higher self speak to her as much as 
it, it does, or as much as Soulstar does. And I've been open to things anyway. I've been open to be, um, you know, kind of aware of spiritual manifestations and speaking to your higher self. And it's been a roller coaster for me because I haven't been as open in my life from the beginning and now it's coming out even more and I'm getting more and more used to it and before believe me I could have been like uh, what are you saying but now it's really clear it's really clear and um, I've let go of the ego in that respect and just going back to the shower scene she was crying hysterically and screaming and she was just basically doing a physical manifestation of Kanika Jenkins before she died so I went to Nini are you okay you know tried to comfort her and did I look like myself no Mm. Her eyes like fully red, body it looked like the whole body was sore, and then we come to know. Have you mentioned about the anniversary? Yeah, it was only afterwards. Sorry. Which is what, um, yeah, yeah. I t I said it to them already, but um, I had no idea that her anniversary was coming up. Yeah. And after I think later on that night, mm -hmm. um, once I'd calmed down, because it took me a long time to recover and even now I'm getting upset thinking about the kind of stuff that's happened to this poor soul um, it was only afterwards we went online because I was like I need to research because she's coming through and she's asking me to help her and all this this stuff yeah. um, which is why she got me to physically get inside her body or she physically brought that experience into my body um, and it was only afterwards that we realised it was the anniversary of her death had just been the day before and I was in complete shock and um, my ego took a while oh. to comprehend it um, yeah I know in the read in my reading sometimes I'll get the same card from different decks and it's like wow extra clarification from spirit this is great but when it's like something like that and it's so unexpected mm -hmm. because I'm an open channel it's like overwhelming. Um, it was so unreal for me and sometimes I tell Nini we had a conversation about when you're putting things out there like this to the world and people knowing the powers that be knowing about different people that are in tune and not wanting them to rise, like we really understand there's an occasion to this and it's not even a joke saying this on YouTube or something like that, like yeah. how many people like Google are watching, oh when yeah. this person rises we can use her for our advantage and uh -huh. there's just so many stuff out there which is scary but we always manifest and put mantras out there, I mean even if something does happen, your energy right, you always get recycled, the energy is restored, you can't, nothing can be stopped, you know the light can't be stopped so even for you to come and say stuff like this now, I'm proud of you. Thanks. Yeah. I suddenly got really sad now because of the yeah. Kanika. Um, I'm really connected to Kanika. I've been talking to her quite a lot recently because I, I put it on the back burner to try and help her out because I was so overwhelmed with emotion. But I've been speaking to her a lot recently, so it's just really hitting her and bringing her up now. But the reason I brought that up as an example is just to, I guess, uh, extra clarification of when. I'm emitting an energy or when an energy is passing through me or channeling through me or around me or trying to penetrate through my field of energy it physically really really affects me and I mean physically I completely change and when it comes to pregnancy it's happened multiple times now including now um, where okay so my periods are always uh, have typically they've always been irregular for a long time until I'm having regular sex with a partner and then suddenly it becomes a bit more regular. That's a very ordinary thing. Um, but sometimes it's still very irregular depending on my stress levels, etc., etc. But um, the first time that I started to actually look pregnant and my boobs, I mean, literally I got really, really sick all of the sudden, out of the blue, in the summertime in Barcelona. <laughs> And I think we were there in like August or July. Um, and my boobs literally became the size of my head. I mean, my boobs are really big right now. Like, I don't know if you can tell. They're really big right now. And normally they're probably like this. But right now they're like this. And they're really heavy. Um, they've been like this for about two weeks. And it's driving me insane. Um, but this happened. First time in Barcelona last year in the summertime. With Nick, we were on holiday because um, it was the first time I was taking him to Barcelona because I wanted to move there. And you guys know we did move to Barcelona and we were living there for the last four or five months before we moved here to Bali. Um, but my boobs became the size of my head. I got really sick for a couple of days. Nick was worried out of his skull. He didn't know what to do or what was going on. I couldn't really explain how I felt apart from like feeling like I got hit by a bus and it felt like everything was shutting down. I wasn't aware at the time that I was going for another deep ascension, but also at the same time, 
when I've gone through so many deep ascensions before and I have gotten the, the typical sickness, it was nothing like that. Like this was a whole other level, whole degree of new shit I had to deal with. And then physically, even though we were eating the same things and I'd actually been eating really clean for days and days and days on end, my stomach goes from this to literally this. And I mean like sticking out so far, like full on like six to eight month style looking pregnancy belly. And to the point where my back was killing me, I was literally acting like a pregnant woman. Like, oh my gosh, I can't even walk. Nick would have to help me and pick me up because literally, I fully embodied being an eight month pregnant woman. Um, we'd walk down the street and I could like, it's not even like, you know, when you're bloated and you try and like suck it in a little bit because you're self-conscious that other people are going to think, Oh, she's a bit fat, isn't she? Or whatever crazy judgments that people make that you're, you become aware of or conscious of or insecure about. Trust me, I couldn't even do that. Like my belly was so out like fully rounded and it felt heavy and solid and I couldn't understand why. And then the kicker that happens is I felt a baby kick. I literally felt a baby kick inside my stomach twice. And I couldn't, even now my ego is like, I can't even conceive that fully. Um, it was just, it was beyond astonishing and we would continue walking around you know up and down la ramblas and stuff like that and people would literally smile and talk to us because they would be like oh you're expecting and blah and like there were so many mortifying things going on in my head in my insecurities at the time because i was like wait this isn't bella from twilight i don't suddenly just get pregnant and then suddenly morph into an eight month baby uh, belly within like two days like this can't potentially really happen here right um but that's what happened for I think it was like a, almost a week and I could barely get out of bed um and the only times I would get out of bed is if it was to literally walk down the road real real slow I mean physically I changed I was not myself at all um and the only time I'd walk out slowly was to go and get like my favorite ice cream if I wasn't sure what ice cream I wanted at the time because, oh my gosh, the cravings, the food. I had so many food aversions. Suddenly I couldn't eat so many of the things I used to love, like peanut butter, bread, um, even the falafel that I was using, usually getting every day, the hummus, the tahini, the baba ganoush, or oh, even the thought of it now is making me want to vomit because once again, I feel like I'm going through spiritual pregnancy. Um, it was a lot it was a lot to deal with um and that lasted for i think about a week and then suddenly it started to subside and then my stomach started getting smaller and then my breasts started getting uh smaller as well and suddenly the constant pregnancy style headaches and the mum brain of not being able to like really understand what the fuck i was even trying to say all of that started to dissipate and I stopped hearing like all the laughter and everything like that. I stopped getting the kicks. I stopped feeling like there was something moving around inside me. And then I was just like, whoa, what's going on? So then for a while I thought, oh, well, I'm a clear channel. I'm a medium, I'm a psychic, all of those labels. And I thought maybe someone that's pregnant right now was channeling through me because I'm a light worker. So I started to fig like trying to figure out logically as logically as you can be when you're spiritual um i started to f try and figure out maybe somebody that was pregnant needed my help M maybe somebody that is eight months pregnant was suffering from all the physical ailments and me as a light worker i was open to help them for a week and to take loads of that pain and take loads of that burden off of them and that could still be true because who knows but that's the kind of conclusion that i came to the first time round. Now, the second and third, and I think this is probably about the fourth time, it's happened numerously, numerously, that's like, what? I don't even know what I'm saying. I definitely have one brain. Um, it's happened multiple times over the last, like, six to seven months. It's happened two, no, one, one more time in Barcelona when we actually moved there. Um, when we moved to Barcelona last year in December, and we left Barcelona, no, was it December we moved? Was it December? Yeah. Okay, and then we left Barcelona mid-February, just before my birthday this year, to come and uh, stay in Bali. Um, 
but before that oh sorry after yeah before that uh we were living in brighton for a few weeks and the same thing happened in brighton um now this thing is these have gotten more intense and because they've gotten more intense i've been thinking that maybe it's not necessarily my future children trying to come in beforehand and communicate with me and maybe it's something to do with the representation of my own rebirth and the fact that i'm transforming so hard and uh going through this rapid ascension like like a, a new level of ascension like every couple of days every couple of weeks and it physically takes its toll on me a lot um what oh okay um and i completely lost where i was now what was i saying i think i was saying something about rebirth um yeah i started to think um from the brighton one when it happened again i was like are you serious and i kept on getting told i'm pregnant and every single time i ask my higher self soul star am i pregnant i hear the biggest yes now i'm not going to tell you how i communicate with my highest oh maybe i should no okay so so saying no you don't need to know that yet okay well we have our own system of what means yes and what means no when i just want like a simple like should i do this yes or no like should i go to bali yes or no like i just have a very simple system and then obviously most of the time when i'm channeling readings and stuff like that or people are coming through to me then yes of course i hear full-fledged sentences like i'm talking to you now um but we have a system oh, Sorry guys, I feel like I'm going for a lot right now. Um, we have a system of how we communicate and how we understand stuff. Um, it's a mixture of the English language that I'm speaking to now. It's a mixture of our, our own language from our home planet. And it's also a mixture of, uh, similar to Morse, Morse code, similar. Wow, I just realized it's similar to Morse code. And symbology and stuff like that. Um, now that's kind of reminded me of the film Interstellar. Anyways, um, so every time I'd ask Soulstar, am I pregnant? I get a resounding yes, like the biggest fat yes. And even now, Soulstar, am I pregnant? I hear a massive yes. Um, and I know that in other realms and in other dimensions, I think I, I feel like I am pregnant. And I don't know if it's leaking into this realm physically because I'm a shaman and I can be in so many places at once or if it's more of a case of you know that I am presence like I am you know I am successful I am rich I am a successful actress dancer I am at peace I am at joy I am always connecting with my higher self whatever it is that you you are manifesting I sometimes I think it's the I am presence but then I think um that might just be my analytical brain trying to chime in too much but I almost feel like she's always saying yes because obviously I'm manifesting that so it's like she wouldn't say oh you will be or uh, not yet but soon now with the I am presence if any of you have studied law of attraction then you'll understand what I'm talking about if you're trying to manifest everything that one of the best ways to do that is through law of attraction and the I am presence is the most powerful way you can do it because if you want something let's say somebody wanted to suddenly have a new car then you wouldn't say I want to have a new car because all you'd be telling the universe is that you don't have it by saying I want to have you'd be telling the universe that you don't have it so rather than saying that you would say I am in my new car and you would visualize it and you could do visualizations through your head you could do drawings you can make a vision board but the main thing is to send out to the universe exactly what it is that you actually want because the energy speaks the same language as you do so if you say i am in my new car you will manifest that into this conscious reality that's the message you're sending out to the universe so it's hard to decipher it's hard to use your own discernment when there's so many different things happening but this has been so intense and such a physical ailment for me for like the last year and a half now um it's been really intense and yes i have gone through all of the motions like even now i feel not nauseous all the time like i feel nauseous for 
like literally majority of the day when I'm going through this because right now I'm going through another spiritual pregnancy whether it's a rebirth because I'm literally transforming and rising from the ashes like the biggest phoenix I've ever been whether it's because I'm entering a new life and leading the old life so it's once again it's another rebirth a transformation whether it's because I'm working on businesses and I'm literally creating my own baby so then physically I feel the ailments uh of another physical type of baby whatever the reasoning is behind it I'm going through it again and I feel the nausea all the time. I have crazy ass food aversions. I have crazy ass food cravings. And then, and I know that's also part of Ascension as well. I know in Ascension, especially the Divine Feminines in Ascension, and we go through rapid Ascension a lot. And currently we are now. I know that we can suddenly just want to eat every single thing in sight. And then suddenly not, like, not want to eat again for like the next 10 hours. But then wake up in the morning, I want to eat every single thing for like 10 hours straight, just like constant chewing. And then suddenly not eat anything for 10 hours. So I know that's also part of ascension. Um, and pregnancy itself is another type of ascension. So it's like, it's hard to, to use your discernment on what the fuck you think is going on. But right now I feel nauseous. I feel like I have mum brain. And when I say I feel like I have mum brain, I feel like my brain is so scattered and all over the place that I'm having to consciously reaffirm what I'm saying in my head before I say it out loud to you because right now I'm in so many different realms I'm doing so many different things and then this physical body feels really weak and really sore my arms are really sore as if I've been like building cribs and carrying sorry oh my gosh Okay, that made me feel better. That's like a mixture of like essential oils that just helped me a lot. Um, do you know what? I need a bit more. Sorry, I feel really sick right now. Wow. Okay, so yeah, this happens like 500 times a day at the moment. Um, yeah, I feel physically sick. I have the food aversions, the food cravings, then suddenly no hunger, the aggravation, I constantly have headaches. Um, yes, I'm making sure my blood sugar levels are good and drinking enough fluids and water and stuff like that. Um, my breasts, as I said, they're three times the size. They've been like this now for two weeks in this round of spiritual pregnancy or ascension or... Um, and then, yes, um, depending on depending on what day it is on what the day has in store sometimes i wake up and my belly is literally just like out here like i mean like six seven months looking pregnant and it's not bloating because i know what my belly and my stomach feels like when i'm bloated and it's not that at all it's the complete opposite feeling uh physically and internally and my feet are swollen and my feet are swollen right now i won't show you them because they look awful right now Oh yeah, a constant exhaustion, wow. Um, and the and the thing is, it's like, um, I don't know if other actual physically pregnant women go through this, but when I am going through this spiritual pregnancy slash ascension, um, it's like, I comfort myself so much already and I love my inner child and I show love to my inner child and myself every day because I know how important that is for your inner child to be loved and to be free and to speak their truth and be creative and all these things. Um, but I find myself being drawn to wanting to get comforted a lot more by my partner when I'm going through these spiritual pregnancies. Like suddenly I become the child because there's a child in me already but then there's another child physically in me and then it's like, wait, I, I, I don't know if I'm explaining it right, but I feel like I end up being more needy, that's it, when I'm going through these times. Um, gosh. And then the biggest thing that's happened, um, not this round so far, but the last round when I was in Barcelona a couple of months ago, and I was going through the same thing. And once again, everyone thought I was pregnant and would be smiling at us and looking at us like, oh, wow, oh, I remember that time. And me and Nick were like, oh my gosh, like it's not just us that see you're pregnant right now, what the fuck? Which is why in that Twin Flame Union video you guys saw, 
he I said that he thinks I'm pregnant right now and yes I don't come on my period no I don't come on my period for ages and ages and ages and ages and ages which this then reaffirms okay she's pregnant and then suddenly my period will come like three four weeks late and everything starts to deflate and all the symptoms start going away and I'm like huh and I've got many different theories on what I think that is um like thinking that my child is my first child is trying to come through and then not everything that I'm doing is in alignment so then they can't come through because there's one or two more things that need to be done blah 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 there's thousands of theories I have on that we can discuss that in the comments. I'm sorry I'm getting physically exhausted right now talking. Um, but I can feel loads of the angels around me. Like I feel Archangel Michael here. And Archangel Raphael. Oh, sorry. Gabriel. Oh, Raphael as well. Okay. Um, anyways. There's a lot of spirits and entities around me right now. So just like when I do my readings, I do become exhausted. Normally it's after... And normally I feel the hot, 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 hot energy when I'm channeling. And then I'm completely depleted afterwards for a couple of hours. But right now I feel the hot, hot, hot energy. And I'm actually depleted during this channel's message. So I'm not really sure what that means. You guys can comment down below your opinions and comments and concerns on that. Um, but what I was going to say is uh, the last round of preg spiritual pregnancy in Barcelona. Uh, sorry, I'm really having to stay awake. Um, okay, selenite. Okay, that's helping me. Um, <clears throat> the last round is when I first heard my daughter speak to me and <sighs> yeah. Yeah, just like I hear my higher self, your higher self, like, she started speaking to me because I was, I mean, like, I fully went in and I was convinced I was pregnant to the point where I was watching Ellen Fisher and Aaron Williams every day. I downloaded like 30 plus videos of their old videos just to watch them going through their pregnancy, doing their morning routines with their babies. I would be so miserable and upset the whole day because I started crying and telling Nick, I just want my baby now. I want my baby here, right now. I want them out of my stomach. I want them right here. I want to hold them up. I started going really in. I was so over emotional. And most of the days I'd be so miserable and pissed off. And the only time I'd be decently happy was if I was watching a baby vlog or if I was cooking and in my visualizations cooking for my whole family like not just me and him but like all our kids i went it, like to the outside world it sounded like i was like, one of those cliche crazy ass women who were like obsessed with babies and i have never been like that before and it got to the point where we went out after me being miserable for like six seven hours we went out like at four o'clock in the afternoon in barcelona and this is in fabria puage when we were staying there for a while um to my fellow Catalan people and um we found a store I can't remember what it's called right now um and they and I wanted to go in there for ages because I was like I really want to go in and see all the baby stuff please 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 I want to see all the baby stuff and as soon as we went in and I saw the prams and the toys and the cloths and the milk bottles I was like ah! I mean literally if I can find the video I'm gonna insert it here it's a diaper view, so it's like made into the shape of a kick and it's made all of diapers. Oh, I love it. He loves this. <laughs> you imagine me like <laughs> we came in here because I saw baby car seats and I was like, yes. <laughs> all the all the people at home they're gonna be like, she's crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh, Paul, can you imagine having a little bubble in this? Come with me, Tokyo! Oh my gosh, it feels so real. I've got so many feelings going on. Yeah, she's excited. I'm so excited. I was just like, I'm so tired. I need to go home. And then I saw baby car seats. I was like, <laughs> Yo, yo, yo. Look, one year to 12 years. This is a good one. See? Wait, let me show your face right now. What is your face? Hey, I'm just like. 
Because he knows I've been a bit baby crazy for what, like, I don't know, probably a month now, right? Feels like a year. <laughs> it does feel like a year. Because I, I don't know who I changed into. I don't know who I changed into. But literally, the only thing that would get me happy was, oh my gosh, do you want to get this from? Or should we get this? No, it's better if we get one that we can fit two drinks in. And then, no, this one has a better shelving unit. And see, and see, even now, I'm talking for my inner child straight away. Wow. Thank you for this therapy session. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I. It was like the only thing that would make me happy was anything to do with a baby a bubba i was like wow like oh and now i'm just remembering it and it's like wow that was literally the only thing and nick being his a cliche masculine self he was like oh my gosh why are you upset why are you upset what can i do what can i do and as soon as we get to the shop and he sees me literally go from like this to like a miserable c-u-n-t to like literally like oh my god he was like what are you serious I take you here and you see some baby stuff and this is how you get what who are you and I was like I don't know but this is making me happy wow that really hurt my boobs <laughs> um but yeah it was crazy and it was so intense so anyways during that that round which is the third round um three 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 um I started talking more to my stomach because it physically felt like, okay, the seed is in there. Oh, and also I started to get all the apps like o Ovia Fertility, I think it was called. And oh my gosh, Pregnancy Plus, I think was the other one. And I think I got those from Aaron Williams. Pretty sure I did. Um, and yes, I started tracking my ovulation cycle. I started tracking my periods. I started tracking, putting all my symptoms in. Do I feel nauseous today? Am I irritable today? Am I lovely today? Am I eating today? Have I peed today? How many glasses of water have I I was tracking everything. I mean everything. I put in everything in the system and it would tell me, you're six weeks pregnant, you're seven weeks pregnant. And fully manifested in my being, I was pregnant. Everything I was doing was pregnant, pregnant, pregnant. Nick started talking to me about everything in life and be like, oh, well, now you're pregnant. You've got to do this and you've got to do this. Or oh, now you're pregnant. Do you know what? I need to start cooking more because you can't always be up on your feet because literally I'm the cook. And this is when we were still living in our van conversion. I have heartburn. What the fuck? <sighs> okay, that was intense. Um... So I would be standing up all the time, as you guys know, in Winston, we love you. And um, please, you guys, send so much love and prayers and Reiki healing energy to Winston because he's been broken into for a second time. Um, and we're, we're really trying to protect him as much as we can before we go back to Barcelona and get him. So please send him your love and prayers. That is our first and official home. <sighs> um, yeah, so I used to stand up all the time and spend ages cooking on the little fire stove and it was getting to the point where I was so exhausted, my back was hurting me and it got to the point where I'd have to bring the porta potty out just to sit on it so I could continue cooking and even then it was like, oh my gosh, how do pregnant women do this? This is exhausting. And I spent so much of the days just lying in bed and um, similar to how it was when we were in Brighton and Nick would go back and forth up that massive hill up Bear Road and go into Brighton town and come back with all the wood and all the fire lighters and all, all of the vegan mince pies that I could possibly request. <laughs> like, um, But this time it was much more different in Barca because... As I said, I started literally physically rubbing my stomach, talking to my baby, because I felt like I literally felt the energetic seed, like, start to expand and grow. And obviously looking at this app was helping to reaffirm it. You know what I mean? And, um, and that's when I started to hear my child speak to me, because I literally, the way I talk to my kids here, the physical representations of them. Oh, I feel like I'm going to cry. Mm. okay let's keep it together um i would be rubbing my stomach every night and i'd be getting nick to do it too and to talk to our baby and to sit and i'd sing to my baby all the time and the power that i feel from my voice and singing when i actually sing is profound anyway because i've always been shut down for so much of my life that i know that i still have to exercise my throat chakra in that way creativity create creatively which i'm trying to do um 
but I started singing to my child knowing that that kind of divine vibrational energy would really comfort them and penetrate through their fields of energy within me and that it would help us to connect even more like this so I'd be singing and singing and singing and singing and then talking to them all the time like baby are you okay I love you so much what do you want to eat do you like what I'm eating well all of that and I started hearing my child speak to me for the first time and it made me cry my eyes out and it was such a cute little innocent voice and it would say stuff like oh i love you mommy or i love your singing voice or um no i don't like this actually can we go out and get this and can we go out and get that and like literally i would if i was not going out i would request nick to go and get certain foods because the child told me to get certain foods and literally could physically audibly hear it as a child's voice and i knew that i'd heard that child before I knew that I'm connect like I know I'm connected to that child and no it doesn't sound like my inner child voice I know what my inner child voice sounds like I straight away I knew it was my daughter oh shit I feel like I need to edit what I just said out okay I'm gonna edit what I just said out because I just said my daughter's name I just realized I don't want to put that out there just yet um but straight away I knew it was my daughter the um that i'd been talking about for a long time because i've always been gravitated to the fact that i'm going to have a daughter first and i always knew what my daughter's name was going to be called because through some of the things and videos and films i have watched that i've connected with deeply that have helped me to reawaken even more of my abilities whether it's clairaudience clairsentience etc etc um i had always been attached emotionally to this certain name because of a certain energy and a certain person that rep represented that person of them being very clear with all of their abilities and um as soon as i heard this baby talking i knew it was i knew it was them and i knew that it was my first daughter and under that name and i knew exactly why and it was just very overwhelming because we started speaking all the time it was very overwhelming because we'd be speaking all the time for I think it was probably about four or five days now at this point um, and then suddenly it started to get quieter and quieter and all the symptoms started going away um, so as I said to you guys I don't know if this is just a physical representation because I'm physically going through a rebirth internally externally um and i've been doing so many different deep ascensions like every week every day i'm not the same person i don't know if it's just a physical representation like that because of how messages come through to me really strongly and i channel these energies and then they physically manifest into this reality but after hearing that girl speak to me my daughter i know that it's more than that um and whether or not all the other times are just a physical representation of rebirth and maybe that one time I heard her because I've been speaking to her so much or whether or not every single time it is spiritual pregnancy and this energy is trying to come through into this reality and they're trying to help guide me like my angels and the rest of my spirit team whatever the reasoning is I know that this is real real for me real for my partner it's real um and I know that a lot of people don't talk about this stuff or open up about this stuff because they don't want to be seen as crazy or stupid or ridiculous or over a, over imaginative because in this 3D matrix, everyone tries to not use their imagination and they shun and judge people who do use their imagination and they shun and judge people who do say that they see things beyond the veil and they see things and hear things that aren't the normal things that people see and hear because most people have their abilities shut down and they continue to shut them down them their whole lives because i mean there's so many bloody reasons most people just like being sheep um but i just want to share this with you guys because it's completely real for me in this reality it's real for my partner it's real um and if any of you guys have been going through anything similar or in the same spectrum of things and whether or not you know the reasoning behind it you've had these experiences whether it's hearing baby's laughter whether it's hearing a higher self of your baby the soul of your baby speaking to you whether it's the physical representation of always looking and 
and having heavy breaths and headaches and nausea and food aversions and stuff like that um and a massive stomach for weeks on end and then suddenly disappearing i'd love to know um and of course you can stay anonymous if you guys would prefer to not comment down below to keep your identity more hidden of course email me at soulstarnini at gmail.com because i'd love to connect with more of you souls who have gone through similar things like this um and we can share experiences um because i i don't think this is going to be the last time i go through this to be honest and I know when I do physically get pregnant, whether I am physically pregnant now or not, because once again, my period is 500 times late and um, my tits are gigantic and heavy and sore and I feel lethargic, I'm nauseous and I have food aversions and food cravings and suddenly loads of the food that I used to love, I don't like anymore, blah, blah, blah. And yes, as I said, I know a lot of those symptoms are ascension symptoms. And once again, as I said before, pregnancy is another form of ascension. But um, whatever the reasoning is behind it, I know this isn't the last time this is going to happen. I just know. <laughs> um, and yes, my higher self right now is telling me that I'm pregnant, just like she always has. Um, so I just want to send you guys so much love and light. You can see my partner, Nick, in the background. <laughs> um, so... If you guys want any readings or uh, tarot readings, Reiki healing, crystal healing, uh, so many distant types of healing services we do, including consultations and natal chart readings, then please um, click the PayPal link or once again, email me at soulstarnini at gmail.com. And if any of you guys want any healthy elixirs or tropical fruits sent to your door, because remember health is wealth, then you can check out noahfruits.com um, or noahfruits, sorry, on the Shopify store that we created. And I'm actually starting to post a lot more on Instagram now. So you guys can follow me on Instagram. I'm sending you so much love and light. I'm going to give you some healing Reiki now. I've got a really big headache. So I'm sure some of you guys are probably having your third eye pulsate as well. Okay, and with that being said, I love you guys so much. Remember to like and share this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Comment down below what kind of videos you'd like to see next. Bye!